reports threat. And he is, oh, is Puma's territory. But you know, whenever you have territory, people are out there to take it away from you. It's like a game of Risk. It's Game of Thrones. <laughs> game of... Gangsters. Well, they oh. fight over territory. <laughs> they fight over streets. It's the Crips and the Bloods here on Antigua Shipyard. Yeah. <laughs> As EG's Puma has spawned in the top right-hand corner of the map. Wait, that's alive, actually. <laughs> Fanatics Alive has spawned in the top right-hand corner of Antigua. EG's Puma's down there in the bottom left. Cross map. Puma leading 2-0. One game away. For people who just tuned in or tuned in and now, this is our fourth best of five of tonight. We have one more best of five after this, and that's going to be a really big one between uh, Liquid Red and EG's the Muslim. Liquid versus EG, two good friends battling it out together. I know they are good friends and two awesome Not guys as well. friends, Kev. What are they? What else are they, Ben? Red is the Muslim's mentor. Oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> you cannot forget that. Yeah. The mentorship has paid off. The Muslim has been doing pretty good, isn't it? Well, he's been doing very good in this NESL season. <laughs> also, also had a pretty good run back then at the Intox 3 Masters Global Challenge in Sao Paulo. Uh, he had the series against Violet. He was down 0-2, came back to 2-2, and then there was that ridiculous game on Tal the Remotor, where the Muslim took out the hatchery, and all he had to do was uh, have an answer to the bailing boss, which of was from one base of Violet. But the Muslim was not ready. But that's uh, something we can talk about more later. Puma vs. Alive is the series we're casting right now. Puma is up 2 to nothing in two super close nail-biting series. I in remember that game. Where was that played? Sao Paulo. That was in Brazil. Yeah, that's yes. right. Of course. Now I remember. Yeah. Obrigado, Brazil. Obrigado. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a good tournament. But oh. Supernova going down 0-2 every series. <laughs> 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 and then still... Uh, Man, uh, so in Brazil, I, bre I bet Dark Force 200 bucks that Feast would beat Supernova. Yeah. They never got to play, and then they played at the World Championships. Feast stops Supernova 2-0. Where's my money, Dark Force? Doesn't count, man. It should count. Dark Force was like, oh, you want to bet 2,000? I was like, well, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Force is a big better. Both players are uh, starting off of one base now, Ben. Puma's going to lose his scouting SUV as he uh, got confirmed that Fnatic are alive. Here's the Purple Terran on the right top side of his map. So if I still one refinery for a life, while well this factory is almost ready. And the second refinery is already on the way for Puma. Yep. And uh, what, are we, uh, what are we seeing? Factory down, double gas, reactor opening for a life. Of course, we want to thank all of you guys for tuning in tonight <laughs> once more. This is our last uh, regular broadcast of the season. After this, we are going to go uh, to Toronto within two weeks. Of course, we're going to try to produce some more fun stuff while we're not on there. But this is the last time you guys will be really able to watch us. Uh, ben and me will be at the Home Story Cup as well, though. So Hell you guys yeah, can man. check it us down. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Cannot wait, Home Story Cup. When we go on vacation, we go cast more StarCraft tournaments. Yeah. Actually, it's been for me like that. Like I can't even remember I had like a normal holiday. Like, when was the last what time? It is a normal holiday. Like, does anybody even want to go to the beach anymore? Yeah, it's like just go to the beach and I don't know, like have no internet. It's like we're at the beach, we can talk about StarCraft, <laughs> like draw the strategies in the <laughs> sand. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool, man. I'm not going to lie. Some serious dedication. That's how we roll, man. Uh, Starpoint is going up right now for Puma. He has the tag lab. Is it going to be normal Banshees or Clock Banshees? He has a little bit of gas saved up, not all that much. Considering the fact, man, that he went for double orbital, I kind of think, uh, or not, not double orbital, double refinery, of course, I kind of think that he is going for cloak. Um, he's still not researching it, but it seems like Alive wants to go for a little bit of elevator action. Yeah, he's going to be putting on some kind of early game pressure. Reactor Marines, Hellions, Medivac uh, is coming. Yeah. It's going to be crucial. If Puma can keep his Banshee in his main base, I think Puma is going to be fine but he really needs to make sure that he knows what's happening of course you can also take the risk of just rallying out your banshee look at the positioning on puma's unit so this is exactly where alive's going to want to drop so puma just every little detail man is so good so well thorough ben. here comes the banshee uh he's going to spot these hellions at least with the SUV. beautiful scout and now he's going to fly oh. he's going to spot the uh, medevac as well so he knows now what are you going to do with your banshee puma he's just going to fly to the other side of the map there's going to be a viking back there yep Viking was in production, Waiting second uh, Viking in production now as well. I think this is so risky from uh, Puma, but so far it's paying off. Yep. He does have that uh, the advantage of being ahead two games, Kev, so it's uh, it's okay for him to do something a little bit risky here on Antigua. Cloak is not ready yet. Cloak will be ready within 30 seconds, but for now he's going to have to micro that Banshee uh, with his fullest attention. Puma losing the depot ban means he's going to be supply blocked for a very long time, and certainly when he loses this depot yeah. as well, 
Uh, it's gonna take him at least the first, uh, the full 30 seconds. Benji took a lot of damage, killed six units, probably a couple of Marines and maybe one or two, yeah, three SUVs. But the, the most important thing is that the Benji is still alive. Puma has quite a few oh. aliens right wow, now in this main base as well. Wow, second cloak goes down, keeping the Banshee alive on the top half of the map as Puma is continuing to defend on the bottom half of the map. It looks the like medevac. he does have the better position, but the Medevac is just the hero of the day, healing these units, keeping them alive. Meanwhile, the Banshee back home, back in uh, Alive Space, does fall yep. to those uh, Vikings, and uh, Puma in a little bit of trouble here, Kev. Yeah, Puma losing all those depots really hurt it. His reactor is taking quite a bit of damage right now as well. This one Medevac has been worth its weight in gold, and Medevacs do weight a lot. Man, that is a lot of gold. <laughs> Imagine if the Medic Lady is like really fat. Maybe she's the one that's singing right yes, now. Yes, maybe she is. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Puma's gonna try to make uh, something happen at least. He has three Marines this and an Hellion. So this Puma's dropping so his doing it. right now. Man, life is still on one base. He's still on one refinery as well. Has a little bit of money saved up, but he's just gonna continue with one base action. We have another cloak benchy over here in uh, no, not cloak, but we have another benchy with cloak in the right bottom side of the map, and it's a little low on NG. There is a single missile turret, but if you keep the benchy over here or maybe over here, it's going to be more than just fine, and it can be very annoying. So Alive has to worry about that. Like Alive is going to make sort of a, like a siege tank push without tanks. Yeah, like uh, if he's you using have the tanks. Vikings, using the uh, the Hellions and the Marines and the Medevacs, but uh, I mean Puma, he's, like you said, he was put so far behind right. just by his inability to produce units with those depots down. I actually think this is going to go pretty well for our life, man. Army supply, 31 against 18. This bunker won't go up. Puma... What can he do? I don't think he can do anything. Scan going down. Uh, Banshee's going to try to save the day. Uh, sec careful with that second Banshee. He is researching siege mode, so if he can get Barracks one tank out... Barracks is now dead, Kev, so he can't produce any more Marines. Now uh, Alive is, like, he's literally, he's in the main base. SCVs are going to have to be pulled off the line. Here come the Banshees, the Marines, the SCVs. The siege tank is not going to pop out, and Alive with some pretty brutal one base play here on Antigua Shipyard is going to uh, crush. Just with Marine Harry, the tank is finally out, but it's gonna be a little bit too late. Puma losing all of his SCVs. Puma calls GG, Alive takes Antigua Shipyard in convincing fashion. Just like that, Alive sticking around. It said like Chris uh, Loranger in the right one side of Alive's victory screen. It also had Alive's name on it too. Yeah, so he's both. Alive, AKA. Korean name, aka Chris Loranger in disguise. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> he like, takes off his mask <laughs> and it's Huck. <laughs> and he I'm takes off another mask and it's Chuck Norris. <laughs> no. No, you, oh, I like the Huck part, but with the Chuck, you, you, you went too far, man. We'll I was be just right saying <laughs> that, that Huck is really a badass in disguise. Well, he is. No, I, wouldn't, like I a, would never argue like, that. He's like a little pint sized badass. Huck is? He's a very brave man. Let's play commercial. Let's do this. We'll be right back, guys, with game number four between Alive and Puma, which will be played on, I don't know yet. I'll tell you guys soon. <laughs>